Hello and welcome to InstaBlog's Global Report. This is Swift Money with fresh updates and more citizen voices from all over the world. Stories for the are Iraqi Al-Turj over decision to dismiss case against the Blackwater Guards. Workers talk to new students at the Ugandan University. Stress paralyzes transportation in Kenya. And with the dawn of 2010, CJ Kareem Khan from Pakistan shed light on happenings within the country during the last one year. Iraqi citizens have expressed their outrage over American judges' decision to dismiss a case against the Blackwater Guards accused of killing 17 Iraqis in September of 2007. Sijawad Abizarek expressed their disgust over the verdict from neighboring Jordan. This is Wad Abizarek, reporting for the Instablox from Jordan. The year 2010 started with Iraqi outrage over an American judge's decision to dismiss a case against the Blackwater Guards accused of killing 17 Iraqis. In September 2007, guards working for the Blackwater American security company started shooting bullets and grenades in a busy intersection in western Baghdad. The guards claimed that they were ambushed since their violent reaction. However, citizens who witnessed the incident said that the guards started firing randomly at cars and people in the area without the of any threat. Those contractors may be above the American law as some Iraqis are thinking right now, but are definitely not above divine law and will get what they deserve at some point. Female students at Ugandan universities have demanded a rise in security measures due to increasing the cases of rape and violence against female students on the university campuses by rapists and thieves posing as students. Sijay Dom Kibuka tells us more from Uganda. Female students at Uganda's universities are under attack from rapists, thieves and gangsters who pose as students, especially at night. Female students studying in the evening are often raped on their way back to their hostels. The rape victims often remain silent about their ordeals not to be publicly known for the fear of facing social stigma. At Chambagwe University, the girls are asking the university administration to increase security by erecting more street lights and a perimeter fence. The security officer at the university has advised female students to buy pepper spray if they can spray into the thugs' eyes in case they are attacked. They should always walk in groups and avoid shortcuts through bushes or dark corners where they could be attacked. A trade strike called the public service rate learners has paralyzed transportation throughout Kenya as schools and colleges prepare to open for a new academic year. So there were Zangui complaints in the transportation roles within the country. This is Rose Wangoi, a citizen journalist from Kenya, reporting on Insta blog. It's the sixth day of the year 2010, but things are a bit hazy for many Kenyans as the country continues to experience unprecedented rainfall, while on the other hand, the transport industry is in what I would prefer calling confusion as the PSPs enter their third day strike. So far, over 20 people have lost life to floods, while dozens have been left homeless in a month when we receive least or no rainfall at all. The month of December is presumably the month when Kenya will witness the most number of deaths in accidents. Though this was not the case, and the June seems to have shifted take this month, which is a sad way to begin an year. The PSVs went on strike after massive harassment by the police force. I call it harassment since some of the cars out to police stations are flawless and maybe refuse to part with some cash, which has been the norm in the Kenyan transport system, while the police officers collect illegal levies from PSVs on a daily basis. The transport industry in this country remains the most chaotic one due to its lucrative nature. If sabotage is not from the police, then it's from cartels like Mungiki, which literally runs the roads in this country. We hope a scheduled meeting between the internal security minister and the PSV group will bear fruit and bring the current madness to an end. With the dawn of 2010, Sihir Karim Khan briefed this in how 2009 culminated as a year of great political, social and economic chaos, confronted by militant violence and growing extremism within Pakistan. This is CJ Karim Khan on Instagram from Peshawar in Pakistan. The year 2009 was a tumultuous time for Pakistan. Terrorism and militancy peaked this year in different parts of the country, especially in the NWFP province and the contiguous tribal belt. Military operations were launched in Swat, Tajikistan, Banu and Aurangzi agencies besides armed action against terrorists in other areas on a smaller scale. The country's political climate also remained full of conflict and there was a general feeling of instability including issues like the controversial Kerry Luger bill and the alleged involvement of the country in the infamous Mumbai attacks launched in November last year. The economy of the country continued to suffer nevertheless 
Texas, with prices rising notably and energy production failing helplessly during the summer. In sports, Pakistan suffered a major setback after the Sri Lankan team was attacked by militants in Lahore in March this year. The infamous attack led to an immediate end of international cricket in Pakistan. However, Pakistan won the T20 World Cup title this year, getting back some of the lost confidence. On the whole, the year 2009 remained a year of challenges for Pakistan. If you want your voice to be heard by millions, that is the blog for your choice. You can contact us at tdeadinstablogs.com. That's all for today's show. You did back with Pastor Dayton, Rossidin Voices. Till then, it's goodbye from the entire team of Kubo Report.